Okay, so let's start to rework this app. As you'll recall, we have an app, and what it does is it takes a series of bridges, lays them out, and what, originally what we've done is we've made this um, part of our part of our app. We imported the uh, the bridges dot uh, ts, and we wrote code last time to be able to pull that in. And um, I want to switch that. So what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to load that data over the network and I want to get it on startup. When the app begins, I want to have it in here. And I also want it so that when you click on a bridge, it gives us, we're going to be doing routing. We're going to make it so the URL is going to contain information about this ID instead of passing it down as a property input on the components. We're going to try managing this a slightly different way. Okay, so what I thought would be useful to do would be to write up a little uh, REST API for working with this bridge data. And then in follow-up videos, we will rework the, uh, the front end, the Angular front end to use routing and uh, data services. Okay, so step one, let's build, let's build a, an API. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to take this bridges.ts, which is currently a module that we are importing into our menu component, and I want to make this be something I can send over, over the network. So what I thought I'd do is I'd build out a little express app, and I'm going to, just for to do this quickly, I don't want to spend a ton of time on this. I'm going to use the Express application generator just to spit out an app for me. And so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it that I don't want to do any HTML rendering. I'm going to have zero front end in this app at all. I'm just going to use Express in order to allow me to do HTTP requests and get do get requests in order to get bridge information. Okay, so let's, let's do this. And I'm going to do this right inside the same um, the same app. So I'm going to have another directory that's going to be for my bridge API. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, MPX and I'm going to run the express generator. I'm going to tell it that I want no view engine and I'm going to ask it to put it in a directory called bridge API. So if you this is saying to use NPM, but I'm going to use NPX uh, so that it'll download and run this all in one shot. And you can see that it's created a new directory for me. So over here in my editor, I've got a new directory called Bridge API, and it's set up an Express app for me that I can use. And it tells me that I need to go in and install the dependencies, which I'll do right now. So I'll jump into the Bridge API and install the dependencies. So I'll have a node modules folder inside of the bridge API as well. And at this point we could start uh, we could start to do some work while this downloads all these dependencies. I'm not going to need to run it just yet. so why don't we start working on some things? So there's a bunch of stuff in here that I don't care about. Um, if you take a look, let's see what it's built me. So I have a public um, folder that has location for all static assets and uh, I don't need it. So I'm going to remove the public directory. Uh, what else have we got? It, I think it generates a couple of routes for me. So it has a user's route, which I'm not going to use. So I'm going to get rid of routes users. Um, I'm going to rename this to uh, better suit the app that I'm building. So let's just call it Bridges. And I'll come back to this in a second. So what else do I need to do? Um, I need to make some changes to the app. Um, I'm going to get rid of these vars because I don't know why. Just there. Okay, so switch that out. So what is this doing? It's pulling in Express. It pulls in 
the uh, path module cookie parser, the Morgan logging module. It pulls in the index route, which I've renamed to bridges. So just for consistency, let's do the same. So I'm gonna pull in the bridges route. I'm gonna get rid of the user route. Um, it has static. Um, it has a static middleware here for serving the public assets, which we got rid of. So I'm gonna dump that. We don't need that. We don't need this. And this needs to be our bridges router. So we have a router that's being imported. It's being mounted at slash, but I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna make it mount at slash API. So the way that you're going to use this, it's gonna be like HTTP localhost 3000 slash API, and then all of our routes are gonna live off of, off of that. Okay, so that's my app. And now we could focus on what's in here. So here I'm gonna get rid of var, change it to const, good. Okay, so let's, let's do a couple of things. So the first thing I'm gonna need is I'm gonna need a database. Now I'm not actually gonna create a database. I'm just going to, um, I'm gonna rework that bridges module. So I'm gonna copy the bridges module, um, where am I here? Uh, bridges.ts, I'm gonna copy it here and I'm gonna call it uh, bridges.json. Okay, so this is not actually a JSON file yet because it's a TypeScript module. So I'm gonna just do a quick modification to it to make it a JSON file and Like so, if I save that, I should have a valid JSON file now instead of, yeah, that's good. Okay, so bridges.json. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, simulate a database. If we were doing this uh, and we wanted to spend more time on the back end, which I don't, we would you know, connect up to Mongo or Postgres or a cloud uh, database server or any number of things, but I'm gonna keep it simple. And I'm just gonna simulate having a database by uh, building a database module. So I'm gonna require um, a DB module, which needs to be built. So up, up here, I'm gonna add a new file um, db.js and the database module is gonna is gonna do the following. So for step one is I need to pull in that uh, set of bridges. So bridges equals require. I'm just gonna require the bridges dot whoops JSON file like so. And then I'm going to provide a couple of, man, my typing needs to warm up here. My, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a couple of different things in order to make this work. So, so if you think about the data we need to get, for this menu on the left, when the app starts, I need to get... Um, I need to get basically the name of the bridge and the ID of the bridge. So I don't need the whole thing. So in order to keep things a little bit lighter, I'm going to just send a reduced amount of data, the just the name and the ID. But if I need to request all of the details for a bridge, then I need longitude, latitude, I need all of these things. So I'm gonna do a couple of methods on my database. So the first one is all. And if you call all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the array of bridges and I'm gonna map it such that I take one bridge and I'm going to return back a reduced object. So I'm gonna send back a new object which has the bridges ID and the name of the bridge, like so. So this is if you call if you want to get 
all of the like all bridges, you're just going to get this subset of information for those bridges. And if you want to get a, a particular bridge by its ID, then you're going to call a method where you pass in the ID and that's going to go into the bridges and it's going to try and find a bridge whose bridge ID is equal to that ID. Like so. Okay. So we've got two methods, bridges all and bridges dot by ID. So now over here in our route, we can make use of that. So we've pulled in the database module here. And what we can do is we can um, set it up so that we can use it as part of the, uh, you know, essentially wrap it in an HTTP route. Okay, so we can get rid of a bunch of this. Uh, let's so let's build this. So function get. So when I when I do a get here, I'm gonna get bridges, and if I ask for a bridge by ID, so this will be like HTTP uh, localhost three thousand. API bridges, and then whatever the ID is here, that's what I'm gonna pass down here. And I need to do another one in order to get, essentially to get all of the bridges. So if you just request the bridges, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna do that. So I need to write these two. Okay, so this one's really simple. So if you ask for all the bridges, I'm going to send back on the response a JSON object, which is gonna be the result of calling my database.all function. So you'll get back a 200, and the 200 will include all of the information from the database. So in the case of bridges ID, I have a, I have a route here that has a parameter on it. So what I need to do is I need to get that off of the, um, the requests set of parameters. So I'm gonna say request params.id. So I pull that off and I'm gonna try and get a bridge. So I'm gonna say, is there a bridge in the database for this ID? So the possibilities are, um, if we don't get a bridge, then we should expect to be sent back um, sorry a 404 so if, if if we don't have a bridge for the ID that you give me I'm going to send you back a 404 however if we do have a bridge I'm going to send back a JSON response with that bridge so you'll have access to it like so. So this looks pretty good. So let's um I wonder if we can run this. So it says, this express app generator says you run the app using one of the following, depending on if you're on a Unix style machine or you're on a Windows machine. So I'm on Mac, so I'll say debug, I'll set this environment variable, whatever, uh, bridge API star, npm start, listening on 3000, so, um, if I fire up another, so if I if I do a request to HTTP localhost 3000 slash API slash bridges, I get back all of my bridges. If I pipe that through JQ, JQ is an interesting little utility. Um, if you install it, it's um, basically this, uh, it's a it's a parser for JSON data, and in the simplest form, you can just pipe responses back through it, 
and it will pretty print them for you like we have here. So you can see that when I, uh, when I do a request to API slash bridges, it's going to give me these objects and I'm going to get back. Uh, this is the ID and this is the name. So if I ask for a specific, let's do this one here, Jackfish Creek. So if I ask for this ID, like so, I'll do the same thing and pipe that through JQ. I get back the object, the full object that goes with that bridge. And uh, you can see that I'm getting 200, 200, 200. If I did the same thing and I asked for an unknown bridge, I'm gonna get back a 404. Um, not found, and if I, I'll just show you the headers. If I include the headers, you'll see that I get back a 404, and you can see my server over here is sending back a 404 response to that. So this is good. I've got a, I've got a, just very basic, but a perfect little web API which we should be able to use in order to modify this bridge app. And what we can do is we can build in the routing and use data services in place of working with that bridges TypeScript module in order to be able to um, build a, a, a more realistic SPA. So I'll pause here and we'll do that. We'll start working on the Angular app in the next video.